All right, guys, so today's video, we're gonna try something a little bit different. I know that most tech YouTubers uh, usually cover cell phones. They go over every little single aspect of the specs, and they usually focus more on the camera. And recently, I was sent the brand new ZTE Axon 35G. Uh, this is a $500 phone that I'm going to kind of talk about here, but I was also sent the new Google Pixel phone. I've currently been using the iPhone 12, and I've also used use the Galaxy Flip and Fold phones as well. And one thing that I've noticed is throughout using all of these different devices, they all have completely different audio outputs. Now on this channel, we usually cover earbuds and headphones and things like that. And so the device that you're going to be using these other things on actually makes a huge difference. And this is one area that I don't think ever gets talked about when it comes to phones. So today I'm gonna to do that on the ZTE Axon 35G because it has some very unique features. And honestly, it has some of the best audio quality I've ever heard coming out of a phone. But before we do that, I am going to give you a quick rundown of the specs so you kind of know what this phone is about and what it is capable of. Um, like I said, this is a $500 phone that has eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. It does run Android 11 and it's using its own interface, which is called MyOS. Uh, this is very close to stock Android, which I'm a huge fan of. I think that's why I like the Pixel phone so much. Now, as far as the chip that it's using, it's using a Snapdragon 870. So if you do like to game on your mobile device, uh, this is one of those that you're not gonna have to really worry about. Uh, but the huge standout feature about this phone is it has an under the display camera. So you don't see the little notch, you don't see the little pinhole camera. It's actually hidden under that 6.9 inch display, which is huge. And the first gen that they tried this, the camera was not that good. Uh, and I'm here to say it is actually improved. But as far as a selfie camera goes, if you're going to compare it to the Pixel phone or the iPhone or even any of the Galaxy phones, uh, the selfie cam on this is still not good. So although this is a unique feature by hiding the camera, the front facing camera would not be the reason to buy this. Uh, but if you're somebody like me that just doesn't take a lot of selfies but likes watching uh, videos and gaming and stuff on my mobile device, having that full display without anything interrupting that, it's actually pretty nice. Now, as far as that screen itself, it is a 2460 by 1080 AMOLED display. Uh, it does have the 120 hertz refresh rate, so everything just looks super smooth whenever you're scrolling. Now, it does have a quad camera setup on the back. Uh, this is hugely different than the selfie camera because the cameras on the back are actually really good. The main shooter on the back is a 64 megapixel camera. There's an eight megapixel ultra wide lens. There's a five megapixel macro lens. And then there is a two megapixel depth lens. So there's a bunch of different lenses that you can use. And also within their camera app, there's a bunch of different uh, styles of shooting. In fact, even if you're gonna be shooting video, uh, there's a way to use multi-camera so that it's filming yourself and then what you're looking at at the same time. And then speaking of the video, uh, it shoots up to 4K and it also shoots 10-bit video. So that's actually um, similar to what I'm recording here with the Sony ZV-1. And one thing that I really liked about this phone actually aims towards the battery. Now it is using a 4200 milliamp battery, uh, but what really stood out is the 65 watt charger that it came with. And this is one of the fastest charging phones that I've ever used. As soon as you plug it in, it's just like shooting through the charging. In fact, it even shows the number uh, counting up real quick. Uh, and I like this feature because it's nice to plug the phone in and then just basically have a full charge before you know it. Now, some things that I've found interesting, although this phone does have NFC, uh, it does not have wireless charging, and it also does not have an IP rating. So uh, some of those features like that, I think is gonna be a drawback. Now, as far as anything that they've actually included with the phone, uh, it does come with a USB-C to three and a half millimeter dongle, because this is another one of those phones that does not have a headphone jack, but having that dongle allows you to plug headphones into the phone itself. And then they also include a clear case. Uh, the clear case is gonna do a pretty decent job as far as keeping scratches off your phone but the case they included gets scratched very easily so uh, it kind of makes your phone look like it's scratched when the case is on anyway so you may want to look for another case or if you just don't use a case expect that the back of this phone is likely to get scratches because of the material it's made from 
But the huge reason that I wanted to do this video is because of the audio output that this phone is capable of. In fact, in my opinion, I think it has some of the best audio that I've heard on one of the newer phones, especially considering the fact that LG no longer makes phones, so we don't get the ones with those really good DACs built in. Uh, but comparing this to the newer phones, uh, for some reason, it works great across every device. I mean, of course, Apple phones and Samsung phones work really good within their own devices if you're going to use AirPods or Galaxy Buds. Uh, it's allowing some upscaling and it's giving you features, but it doesn't play well with all other earbuds or headphones out there. And the Axon is actually hi-fi audio capable because it can play back at 24-bit, 192 kilohertz, which you don't normally see in phones. Uh, it has some really nice built-in features. Uh, it has DTS-X Ultra, which is kind of like Dolby Atmos. Uh, it's giving you this surround sound effect, which kind of helps with being able to tell where different things are coming from. Now, this isn't really a mode that I would use with listening to music, but if I'm gonna be watching movies, I like to switch over into this, and it just allows me to enjoy movies a little bit differently than just in normal stereo mode. But speaking of the stereo mode, they actually even have different options for that as well. You can just listen in traditional stereo, which is just spaces out things evenly, but they also have a wider format, which opens things up a little bit more, or they even have an in front mode, uh, which is allowing you to hear dialogue and things a little bit clearer because it sounds like it's more right there in front of you. Now, some features that I really liked in this phone is not only did it have some pre-built EQ options, which really kind of focuses on different things, it also has a 10 band equalizer. So if I'm listening to a pair of earbuds or headphones that I want to have a little bit more bass, or pull out the mids or bump up the treble a little bit. Having that 10 band equalizer uh, made me really feel like I had more control over the audio. And then outside of just actually using those features, the audio out of the phone using headphones and earbuds actually sounded louder than it did on all of those other ones. It just seemed to have much more volume output. Uh, same thing with the bass and the treble. I felt like bass had more impact. The treble sounded brighter than it did. And I would switch between one phone to the other. And it was just so impressive how much better the Axon sounded with the same device using it on another phone. So if you've ever actually checked out one of the earbuds that I recommended and I talked about the sound a certain way and then you said it didn't sound the same way that I explained it, this may actually be why because it really is going to depend on the device that you're using. So again, I know this is a different type of video, um, and I know that there is a lot of videos about phones, specifically even about this phone in general, because it did come out today. Uh, but I've had this phone for over a month now. I've had plenty of time to compare it to other models. And I thought that it would be interesting just to kind of talk about how the audio that you're listening to is affected by the device that you're using. And so I thought this was the biggest standout feature, even though they're pushing the behind the display camera, they could talk about the large display that this has. It does have some interesting features, but I think the fact that the audio is so good out of it, uh, especially for me to do a video, I, I chose not to do a video on the new Pixel phone because it had the same type of features and everything that everybody's gonna talk about and the audio output on it was just okay. This Axon phone really wowed me when it came to audio. Obviously that's what this channel focuses on. So I wanted to talk to you guys about it because $500 for a phone that has all of those nice features, but has audio output like this, is nice because some people spend $500 or more just on portable media players to get this type of output. It also has a micro SD slot, so if you do want to just load your flat files onto that card, you're gonna be able to get better audio quality and not actually take up the storage on the phone itself. So that's another huge plus with this phone. But again, this was just a quick rundown of some of the specs that it does have but also talking about how great I felt the audio was. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the ZTE Axon 35G. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for checking out all the other videos. And as always, make sure to stay tuned for more.